Would you let your family pet become the home and feeding ground for over 1,000 maggots and blowflies? Would you put at risk Australia's greatest export because of an easily preventable condition? My mercury's in retrograde. My mercury's in retrograde. My, my mercury's in retrograde. My mercury's in retrograde. The mulesing procedure has been in use by all Australian sheep farmers for over 50 years, successfully preventing sheep from becoming flyblown. As the maggots grow and multiply, they feast and burrow through the wool and flesh of the live sheep. If we don't mules, then the maggots can um, get into the rear of the sheep and if it's too severe, then you can lose the, those sheep. They just die, uh, die after a period of time if the maggot infestation is too great. I think the welfare of the sheep's a lot better after they've been mules than the alternative of not mulesing them. Many years of running around chasing sheep that have been, um, been plug on, there's nothing worse. The blowfly begins by laying its flesh-eating eggs, which grow into maggots, in a warm, moist and bacteria-filled environment, also known as the sheep's breach. As the maggots grow and multiply, they feast and burrow through the wool and flesh of the live sheep. This causes blood poisoning and a major shock to the sheep's immune system, usually resulting in a slow and excruciatingly painful death. This painful process can be prevented simply by the act of musing. The lambs and their mothers are rounded up into portable sheep yards. They are then separated from their mothers and put into a spacious pen to await musing. The lamb is captured by the assistant muser and placed in the cradle. A cradle is a rotating device that can hold up to four sheep at a time. Their back legs are carefully held in place by secure clamps. The lamb goes through four different stages while in the cradle. Horns are clipped with sharpened sterilised clippers and the sheep receives an injection to prevent diseases such as scabby mouth. Depending on their sex, a particular ear is marked. The sheep is labelled with the farm's specific information with an ear tag. Rings are placed securely around the testes, a painless way of desexing the animal. The final stage is the mule's procedure whereby sharp shears are used to remove skin from the tail and breech area. The tail is then surgically removed to ensure the wound is clean cut and sterile. The anaesthetic is applied as a series of stripes up and down the wound, ensuring full coverage of the wound and tail. After these stages are complete, the sheep are released from the cradle to go back to their mothers. An animal activist group, PETA, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, have deemed the musing procedure as a cheap and cruel way of preventing fly strike. They describe musing as a gruesome procedure in which farmers use dirty gardening shears to cut huge chunks of skin off a lamb. Although musing has been approved by the Australian Government and Federal Agricultural Minister several times, which gives all farmers of Australia the right to muse their sheep, Peter continues to actively shed a negative representation of musing to the world. Peter and the wool industry agreed to allow time to find alternatives to stop musing by the end of 2010. The wool industry body, Australian Wool International, which is funded via a tax from the sale proceeds of wool, set about on behalf of all wool growers in Australia to find suitable alternatives to musing. The alternatives trialled are Special clips which stretch the skin and smooth wrinkles on the breech. It's like a hair clip, I suppose. It clamps, clamps the wool to the skin and cuts off the blood circulation so that the wool drops, drops away and you're left with the skin. They're very labour intensive to do and 
and at the moment they're plastic clips and some of the clips drop off in the paddock behind the lamb so they're an environmental thing there. Um, a chemical which makes the wool drop out, you administer the chemical with a needle around that same breech area of the sheep and the wool drops out over time but that's still in the very early stages and they've got a little way to go with that. So unfortunately after quite a few years of trials, to my mind, I don't think there are any real alternatives to mulesing apart from the development of a significant pain relief measure whereby two different, a short and long acting anaesthetic have been developed along with um, blood clotting agents and also antiseptic to, um, to keep the wound clean and help it heal better. After spending in excess of $21 million, there were no significantly effective methods of replacing mulesing. The best method is to continue the mulesing procedure in conjunction with the spray-on fast-active anaesthetic. This is shown to be very effective in aiding the lambs to mother up and to recover from the mulesing procedure with no measurable economic loss. But over the last five years, with the recognising that mulesing is not a viable you know, alternative, um, we've gone down the track of breeding out the wrinkliness in our sheep, whereby having a plainer bodied sheep um, has reduced the need with also with um, developing a different fly management technique in the spring have managed to um, eliminate mule, the need for mulesing on our property. This breeding procedure was done by sourcing a particular breed of ram with plain bodies and less body wrinkle to pass on this particular trait to the next generation. This process takes time and patience to correctly create a conventional breed of merino sheep that can withstand Australia's harsh weather conditions that bring the blowfly with it. By genetically selecting plain bodied or wrinkle free merinos, this has proven to be the only effective method to discontinue the mulesing procedure. This usually takes five to seven years when a farmer may discontinue mulesing. The Great Southern farmer David Meir is an example of a farmer who has, after five years of using the breeding principle, can successfully manage the blowfly issue without mulesing, but still continues to dock the tails. So when it gets older, if you didn't mules it, all that wrinkle there gets bigger and collects all the urine and the gum and that's where the flies like it. It makes them easy to manage, especially when there's uh, bad fly waves around, they get breech strike and that and the mulesing uh, tightens the skin up on the breech which helps prevent it. It doesn't save every sheep but it, it saves a lot of sheep. Mulesing has proven to be a successful way of preventing fly strike around the sheep's breech. Without mulesing, over 3 million sheep in Australia will die a very slow and painful death every year. With mulesing comes short term pain and long term gain. We hope this documentary has made you reconsider this necessary act. As they say, you've got to be cruel to be kind.